This week on the Big Water Podcast, matter of fact, backing up, did you see Gary Roach on the last time? If you haven't, make sure you go check out old Papa, Gary Roach legend. But this week, we've got a young guy that's trying to get in his footsteps. Isaac Lockich just won the head-to-head -head tournament on Wisconsin like a week ago. You couldn't plan it any better. We talked to him about getting into the game, being a young guy, doing well, the technology, pretty much everything. He doesn't really hold back. We kind of, we, we ground him on him. We made him talk about all the good stuff. Another podcast producer, dude. Are you get, are you beginning to like these? I've always liked them. Oh, okay. They, yeah, they, just... They're uh, they're long, but uh, depends on how well you do, I guess. If right. I like them. Okay. And how well you listen. <laughs> <laughs> We're not off to a good start. So here's the deal. We have had a kind of an eclectic mix. You know, we've had industry gurus. We've had female kayak anglers. We've had like hardcore guides. We've had literally angling legends. And kind of everything between. Some of these guys are my friends. Sometimes I don't even know them. Uh, we had like Natty Welch. That's a great podcast, I thought. You know, the mm -hmm. photographer talking about his time, you know, with Tom Petty and some really introspective things. Soup. And then um, Marshall Yonda was. Like, yeah, Marshall Yonda was different. I don't know what your favorite was. I probably don't say because it would get somebody mad. But I, I kind of like them all. Oh, here we go. Politician. Well, here's a little different. We've got Isaac Lockich. I'm not even sure if I said his name right, but all I do know is this kid's catching fish. He's kind of setting, he, he's, he's taken, uh, taken interest. Okay. Cause people are, are like, they want to know what's this kid doing. Right. So he's using a lot of different tactics and things. We're going to talk about a little of this. And really the big thing, you know, the business sense to people right now want to love, like how, how do you get jumping into the fishing business? And we've had some old school dudes in there and here's a young guy and he's trying to make it. And he's literally like, this is his first year jumping in. So it's going to be interesting to hear, you know, Again, I did that, but it's been a long time. Long ago. time, yeah. You're becoming like the gray beard. I am the old you know, man. I want to point out too, I, I your your reverse raccoon eyes from being on the water today. Yeah, that's so, nothing new. So, I, yeah, I know. I've Isaac seen, may be new, but that's we've this seen is other, nothing new. We've seen other podcasts with that too, but I I laugh every time. So we're gonna try to break him out of his shell because he's kind of he's kind of a quiet guy. You know, you know, I'm you know I'm sometimes aggressive. I've heard. You think assertive, assertive, assertive. Thank you. That's so. You know, sometimes I feel like we're soften. Gonna, we're we're going to soften the word a little bit, and, and you're going to be. Assertive. Sometimes I feel like you're just you know you're violent towards me, and other times I feel like you're you're part of you're you're my teammate. Or or am I just messing with you? You, know, you? you just never really know. I think I'm done with this. Let's bring on Isaac and let's find out what it's like for a young kid right now who's whooping people's butts, but yet to make that and he's quitting his job. Um, I don't know a whole lot about what's going on, so he's going to tell us. And he is absolutely, I think he's won team of the year. He won uh, an 18 and 19 in the MWC. And then he went and I think he won the AIM championship last year. So, I mean, he's I mean, he's got a resume in a short amount of time, 20-some-year-old kid. And I'm interested to hear it, to be honest with you, because I honestly don't know a whole lot about him. All right, let's bring him on. Isaac, welcome to the Big Water Podcast. Thanks for giving us your time. No problem, Ross. How you doing today? I wouldn't complain, but producer dude over here, he's the guy you'll hear every now and then that tries to keep me on track, which he's done a poor job of the last decade plus. But um, nevertheless, I, I was fishing this morning. I got a 13 today. So, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of my guys there got a 14-1 yesterday. So that was I, I saw that one on social media. That's, that's a pig, man. How, how long are those fish measure? Um, the biggest one was 32. The other one was 31. Oh my God. But the girth is just, honestly, the, the first one there, I thought that was like state record deal. Cause the girth was as big as I caught a 15 one a few years ago. And, um, well more than a few now, but, and that one, I thought I, I had the state record cause they just, they're just different. They just don't look right when they get right, that size. Right. But, Got that freak freak level going on kind of thing. That's awesome, man. But yeah, it was uh, it was a good day. Weather was cooperating, which it won't tomorrow. But so tell us a little bit, it's Isaac Lockich, right? Is that correct? Is bad yeah. you, especially you got you Wisconsin guys. I love making fun of Wisconsin people. Well, I mean, I mean, I've been fishing my whole life. I mean, growing up in Wisconsin, you know, outdoors is you know kind of blood, bred, bred bred into us here. Um, my dad and my grandfather got me into it at a really young age. I mean, 
I remember, I mean, some of my earliest memories were being on the dock at my grandparents' house or, you know, in the boat with my dad and my grandpa, fishing the walleye runs in the spring kind of thing. So, you know, I've been doing it for dang well near my entire life. Uh, there's pictures of actually of me in my dad's backpack when I was like eight months old and Yellowstone fly fishing with him. So like, I, you know, born and raised to do this and then, uh, you know, started doing, you know, small little kids derby stuff as, you know, as I grew up and had the opportunities, you know, whenever we were at around, uh, you know, there's a quarry around here that had like a, a kids weekend where it was always like they made little competitions out of it. So started started doing that and did some ice derbies and got into high school, did some, you know, bass stuff, some musky stuff. And then slowly here, I kind of found my niche in the walleye world. And uh, yeah, the last five, six years now, I've just been really, really focusing all my time and energy on chasing big walleyes across the country. So can't complain about that too much. Yeah. I mean, I've made no fact I'm always giving cheese heads hard time and you're going to be no exception, but there's That's a lot funny. of guys. I mean, you know, like Tom Keenan's a friend of mine who's one of the all time money winners. You know, he's from kind of North Central, if you will. Um, Dean R. Yep. Olson, you know, in Appleton, there's he's top couple all time money winners. You got Shakurit. I mean, there, there's a long list of dudes. And then you could even go farther back with some of the older school guys. But, you know, more recently, Sprangle is one of the younger guns. You're kind of fitting in there. I mean, in all honesty, I just love busting guys' chops about like, because I hate little Winnebago so much. But, is it do you think a lot of those guys from that area are good fishermen because they have to fish in just such grinding conditions on so many bodies of water yeah is that I, I mean you know, it, you know we've said it a million times you know between our friends group and stuff it's it's probably one of the most difficult bodies of water to find any sort of consistency on in any way shape or form so like guys that can figure out that system it seems like when they go other places in the country, it just kind of clicks easier. Um, Winnebago is one of those places where, I mean, you, you got really two, technically almost three or four different river systems almost uh, kind of working through that, you know, whether it's the upper rivers, the Fox and the Wolf or, you know, the river right through downtown Oshkosh or even the rivers on the north end of the lake, like the Nina and the Menasha. So like, you know, you got all these different, you know, areas and then you have the lake stuff. So you got, you know, Winnebago itself is 60 something miles long by 20 miles wide or whatever it is. And, you know, massive body of water, mainly pretty much structureless, a lot of 20 feet of mud, which makes it, you know, really tough to try to locate fish in that vast, you know, emptiness of nothing. Um, but then there's still a ton of rock structure and weeds and, you know, just anything you want to fish on Bago, you can kind of pick your poison and go and do it. And, you know, to, to figure it out on a day-to-day -day basis, year to year, it's difficult. And it, it definitely, it tests you. It makes you, you know, you, there's a lot of days where you're making decisions, not based on what you did in practice or pre-fish or anything like that. And you're just doing it off of gut instinct past experiences you know if you got uh you know a certain wind direction or you know sun clouds whatever like you make decisions sometimes based off of just what you know not even what you were seeing in practice just because it, it changes so fast out there um so yeah i think you know some of those guys like springle i mean he grew up over on another super shallow body of water here in wisconsin which is beaver dam lake and you know, that body of water is tough to fish. I mean, I've been out there probably five times trying to target walleyes and I have not caught a walleye doing it. Like it is difficult. It's hard. You know, when you get these shallow bodies of water, it's, it's not simple. I mean, these walleyes will go up into six inches of water and that's just not something that a lot of us are used to. So yeah, it, it definitely cultivates a, you know, a different level of angler, I would say for sure. Cause you got, you got to look outside the box every day. Yeah. It makes me think of like, I did some stuff with Mike Gopheron. He used to travel with a buddy of mine from back here. And, uh, some of the stuff he'd go look at and practice. I'm like, what, you know, living on, on places that like I've fished my whole life. And I'm like, what? but but that's right. again you know that's that's how you win and that's that's also how you fall on your face but that's also how you win and you, you know you 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 get that stuff that you have to yourself right 
Oh, definitely. I mean, one of my favorite spots on Winnebago is about 15 feet off the shoreline and I pitch up underneath a dock to catch walleyes. Like, I mean, it's straight dock pitching for walleyes and there's big ones there. Like there's 22, 23, 24 inches, which from the Winnebago system is good fish. I mean, most days on Winnebago, if you can put together a 19 inch fish limit, like you're going to be sitting really good in a tournament for sure. Like it just, it doesn't have the big fish like it did, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, it's seen just an unbelievable amount of, full amount of pressure the last several years. We actually just went to a three fish limit now um, on the system. There's still no size limit out there, but they dropped it from five fish a day to three. So we'll see if that does some does some good for the system and maybe helps the size a little bit. But we'll find out soon. I hope I hope it brings it back. I mean. I I remember stories my dad told me of back in, you know, the seventies and eighties when they were catching fish out there, that it was just insane. And part of the reason why they're not there is because they kept them all and brought them home and had fish fries. But, you know, it, you know, as conservation and that stuff has become more aware, you know, most of us who are fishing that system regularly are throwing the, you know, 18 plus inch fish back pretty regularly because those are mainly your spawning fish and they're all 18 plus, which, probably sounds really weird to you coming from Erie where you're 18 to 23 inches are all males and everything else is a female. Well, but. and you know, it's just funny cause I take a lot of shit and you know, like just the other day I, and then I take shit both ways. It's just kind of funny because that guy that caught that giant, you know, I kind of said to him, you know, it's his fish. It's on a guide trip. Right. Right. We, most of my guys, as they've been with me a long time, like that guy was a guest of a guy who's fished with me for a long time. And, you know, it, it's his call. You know, it's one of my other guides. He's dealing with the stuff there. But I kind of said, man, this is take a picture or put on or put it on a wall deal. You know, like, I mean, you know, let it go. Right. And it's just funny because, you know, you look at comments and stuff and producer dude always is showing me the comments. And it's like I literally get shit for doing a release video. People are like, eh, wh- what are you saying? We got to release all our fish. Like me just releasing a fish. And, and right. you'll, you'll learn if you already have it. I mean, you don't even have to fish to know social media is just a bunch of keyboard commandos. But but then oh, on the flip yeah. side of it, you know, I probably release, I don't know, hundreds of trophy fish every year on my trips, which I don't know anybody else that does that here guide-wise. And like here a guy keeps a fish of a lifetime. And it's like, man, I got no problem with that. I really do. Right. Right. I'm the same way. I mean, I, I, I mean, part of it's understanding the ecosystem. I think, I think a lot of guys are really misinformed about what, like what's going on out there. And like, for example, like green Bay is kind of what I would consider home body water. It's, it's basically my favorite body of water. One of them at least. Um, and out there, like, you know, we have a ton of fish that are 28 inches and up, but all the studies that have come out through the DNR and the biologists basically state that those fish that are 28 and over, they're not really benefiting the ecosystem as much as say like the 22 to 25 inch females are like those fish, their eggs have a higher survival rate um, to get to like hatching. And then they actually have those uh, fry that do hatch actually have a better survival rate and are healthier to then reach fingerling and so on down the road. So like you get a ton of guys where, you know, they want you throwing all the really big fish back when, you know, really those fish aren't really benefiting the ecosystem in the way that like those smaller fish that a lot of guys are still keeping are. So like, you'll never get past that. I mean, there's so many guys and you know, that, like you said, keyboard warriors, they're willing to, you know, they'll sling it out when they're on the other side of a screen kind of thing, but they'll say it to your face ever. I'll tell you that. So like high school age or whatever, I mean, I know you've been fishing just like me since you were younger, but obviously when people say they go fishing, you, you internally got to roll your eyes sometimes. Cause like they're, you're thinking of some dude with a 40 ounce and he's, you know, bobber and worm. And you're like, no dude, like I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm into this. I'm here dark to dark. Were you super competitive and like into sports? Is that how this thing started before fishing or were you... Um, kinda like, I mean, I was always competitive. I never really got into like team sports. Um, I just, I don't know. I would always get frustrated. You, you know, you always felt like it wasn't your fault that you lost in like a team sport, like, cause it was obviously a group effort. So like the team lost kind of thing. So like, yeah, you could go over what you did wrong, but you could never really, you know, put a finger on like, Oh, well, if I would have done this differently, the whole outcome would have changed. So like, 
I, I did track and I, I was very competitive in like track and field and uh, cross country and stuff like that. So like, I, I would say the competitive aspect really came from honestly, every single day we went fishing with my dad and grandpa was a tournament. Like they made it like, fun. Like for us as kids, like it was always kind of about, okay, well, who's caught the biggest fish for the day kind of thing. So like, I would say that's where we got, I mean, every time we went out, it was, it was, I did not want to get beat by my dad or grandpa and whoever else was with us. I didn't want to get beat by them either. And, you know, I, I would just, try to absorb as much knowledge as I could. I mean, I read so many articles on fishing. Like my dad used to have, you know, like laundry tote size tubs just filled to the top with in fisherman magazines from like 1970s all the way on. And I've read probably almost every article of in fisherman since probably I would say 75 to 76 all the way to the present. Like, I, I don't think I've missed an article on fishing and in fishermen and probably yeah 30 years worth of time frame 40 years worth of time frame and i'm 25 so like you know that's huge getting the knowledge you know i've read al linder you know dean arnoldson kim os Kavayas, parsons spring like i've read every Pro single producer dude he hasn't was. said anything of me yet have you noticed that? Well, no, I don't read your stuff. I just watch you. <laughs> I'm impressed that he he when he talked about the year that in Fisherman, like he was, talking, I got all the episodes or all the magazines from, and he and he named the year that in Fisherman magazine started. I know, like well, 1975. Like he he knew that. Yeah, we know those guys. I mean, and I I think I started writing for him in '98, maybe. Something like that. So there's a few of there if you I, I want to backtrack. You I've look, I, I almost would guarantee you I've re read one of your articles. It's <laughs> honestly not very I memorable. I it, but I don't remember <laughs> anything about it. Yep, that's typical. That's typical I, well, of Ross's no, it writing. Was, <laughs> they're making me look bad. But, like, no, it's not that I wouldn't. I mean, the only reason why back -pedaling, I back -pedaling. those guys' names is now. Like, I didn't even realize who was writing it back then. Like, when I was 10 years old, pouring over these magazines, like, I didn't know who was writing them. I was just reading and just the info. How did you actually make that jump to fish tournaments? Because I think most people guiding in tournaments, that, that's kind of their jump when they say, hey, I, I don't really want to clock in at a job. You know, I don't want to frame in houses or whatever it is. So... But doing it and being successful is two different things. But what was that thing? Like, how, how did the first tournament happen? Um, so I want to say, I don't even remember what year it was. Probably six years ago, a buddy of mine picked up a boat. And he, he's kind of a salmon guy. Um, but he asked me, he was like, hey, do you want to jump into a couple of uh, – walleye tournaments so we did like a small shop tournament in the spring of that year i think we did three that year we did a small shop turn we did two out of his shop and then we did uh the battle on bago was kind of the one that really kind of hooked me i would say um the first the two shop tournaments were like 20 boat fields nothing special um but we actually did pretty good we took like a fourth and an eighth or something like that out of 20 so we were kind of like big head thinking we're all tough guy, you know, 18 years old or whatever we were at the time, thinking we're top shit kind of thing. And, uh, but then we went into battle on Bago eyes opened like, Holy cow, 375 boat field. This is a little bit more big time league here. And we took a hundred and hundred and twentieth or something like that, that first year. And, um, I decided, you know, at the end of that year, I, I was like, all right, it's, I got to get a boat. I got to do something. So I started shopping around, found the boat I have um, that I've ran for like the last four years, basically, or five years. And uh, picked her up that fall in September, started breaking her in, started exploring some more, doing some more, you know, traveling a little bit more. I'd never really... I'd, I'd always gone like up north to northern Wisconsin where my grandparents are from and fished like the local lakes up there. But I started, you know, fishing a little bit more on Winnebago, fished a couple times on Green Bay for fun. And then um, the next year I was like, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into the Ames circuit. And uh, me and a buddy, we jump into that and come out first tournament of the season. And this, this is what really, it, it, I, this is what's put the chip on my shoulder. Um, I pre-fished for two days and I had like a decent little kind of program running. It was a Fox River in De Pere. 
is always the aim opener. It has been for the last like five years now. And I, <laughs> we roll into our spot on day one or it's a one day. It was like a Sunday. And I want to say we didn't catch anything for about 30 minutes. And then my buddy, he hooks into a fish. And he's like, oh, it's got to be snagged. So I, I had put the net back down, like going back to the front of the boat. And he's just like, oh, my God. And I turn around and I just see this big softball mouth come out of the water with this big white swim bait shaking in its mouth. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap, that's definitely not snagged. So come back, scoop it. His biggest fish he'd ever caught, 29 and three quarter inch walleye was our first one. I, he, I was like, where'd you hook that one? He pointed, you know, we, we tossed that fish back. I fired out there next cast. Boom. I got a 27 weighed that or took the photos on that one center back next fish 26. And then we ground the rest of the day away for some 20 inches. Well, we knew we were sitting pretty good. We thought we, you know, we didn't think we were going to win it, but we knew we were going to be top 10 or so. And we actually got disqualified. Um, we took a bunch of our pictures wrong and, uh, I got really, really upset with that. I, I, I was mad at myself. I was, you know, ticked off. I felt like I let my partner down because I was the one taking the pictures and didn't, or I was the one holding the fish. And I think the pictures that ended up getting screwed up. So like super just down on myself and mad about the whole thing. So we kind of came back the rest of the year with a vengeance, put another top 10 up, I think, or like an 11th or something like that and gained just a ton of knowledge and, that's what really started it. I, I mean, that, that drove a kind of a nail into the, the fire right there and just set me off on a tear where I was like, I'm going to figure this stuff out no matter what it takes. And, you know, the following year was the first year that Max Wilson and I fished together. So that was 2018 and uh, just put together, you know, kind of a mishmash season um, and, and managed to just fall into team of the year. Kind of, you know, we, we had some good finishes, but nothing spectacular or anything. Um, nothing really crazy. And then 2019, we came back with, you know, a whole different mindset and just kind of buried everyone on that circuit. You know, we went into the last term of the year with, you know, leading in team of the year. And, but there was a guy that was chasing us real close behind. And I, I told Max on like, when Tuesday or Wednesday of that pre-fish that we were going to win it, I'd found a, a really specific bite that no one else was on. I knew no one was doing it because they just couldn't the way we were fishing. And it's just, yeah. And that, that really just kind of solidified the fact that, you know, 2019, the back-to-back -back team of the year, winning it at the end of the year, I like, I just knew that in my head, I could, I can do this for a living. I can really chase this. I can push it. I, I know I can do the work that's required to make this happen. And yeah, the rest is history last year. I mean, another crazy banner year and it's hopefully I can keep it rolling. We'll see. I mean, it's so easy to fall in this. I mean, there's so many good people that you fish against day in and day out. And Part of it is, I mean, you fish against the fish too. You got, you got to beat them first before you can think about anyone else. And I, I always think about, like I ask guys, especially like some of my buddies on the bass tour, um, you know, does the fishing or the business come easy or hard for you? Or is it kind of equal? Um, I think the fishing is easier for me. Uh, I'm kind of, I wouldn't say I'm an introvert, but like I, I do sometimes struggle with, you know, interactions with people once in a while and i'll tell you what i'm one of the worst people in the world with names like i you know i rec i remember most people's names but like i get it. I get it bob what i get it bob well this is why you didn't remember ah, your no problem, Jared. <laughs> yeah i don't remember your articles like you think you'd at least lie yeah, yeah. That's oh cool. I, I read you all the time uh, <laughs> no i mean it's just yeah i mean yeah the fishing's easier you don't you, for me at least like and, well, and part of that is, I mean, I don't remember who it was. There was a guy, I read someone's Instagram post like five years ago or something. Cause I was or four years, three years ago. Cause I was looking, starting to look for sponsors and try to learn the business aspect of it a little bit. And, uh, you know, I was struggling. I mean, as a lot of young anglers in this, I think do, and it, it's discouraging when you, you know, when you reach out to 25 companies in a year and you hear back from maybe one like 
that's tough. Like that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow, you know, thinking you did something that deserves, you know, recognition and realizing that you really didn't like, you know, you got to eat that and you just got to keep going forward is a big part of it. So like, yeah, cause it, it's like that in anything. Like if you really look at it, like I remember Brandon Palinek telling his mom, you know, I don't have a plan B because if I do, I'll fall back on it. And I recently had another, right. another guy kind of tell me the same thing, which I also would tell you of myself. And yet, you know, when you hear moms, right? Like they don't want to hear that. Like, like, no, we need something. Oh, no. to... My mom hates this. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I did. I can't No, mom. Cause she cares. I mean, cause it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right. But yeah, you look at it and you look at like, even in my opinion, uh, like an Ike and Ellie, like the dude came out crazy, you know, he was fishing like a champ. Then he kind of learned like, Hey, there's a business here. And all these guys, right. like, you know, he hired an agent and, and you, I could name off other people. I could name a couple guys that are really not, I don't think me and you or other bass guys would say are amazing fishermen, but they're making bank because they're really good at the business end and promotions and sales. Right. But yet, like in Ike and Ellie, I would, I don't know if you've even thought about it like this, because I still kind of evaluate things all the time. Every day. You know, Ike and Ellie's not fishing tournaments now. This is a new thing. But he hasn't had, not that he's, dude, not that he's not a great fisherman, but I look at it just like with what I do in my business. When you have to concentrate on so many things and you can't just focus on fishing, that's a hard deal. And like Ike and Ellie, when he had so many things going on and he's got shows and I mean, dude, it's insane. Like the workload is just nuts. It's hard to focus on just, hey, doing the tournaments and having the success because the guys you're fishing against, a lot of them are like, I don't do business. Like I just fish. Like Steve Kennedy's in one. He's like, I don't do sponsors. <laughs> you know, he wears an Auburn hat. And he just fishes. Right. And here's a guy like Ike and Ellie that's just going guns out, TV shows, podcasts, uh, foundations, I mean, on and on and on. So, you know, I don't think if you look at his finishes, he's done nearly as well, you know, but yet that's what's required for really the big business plan. And I'm probably something you'll, you'll, you'll find out, uh, hopefully not the hard way. Oh, no, I, yeah, I'm very well aware of like kind of, yeah, the workload. I mean, really, when it comes down to it, I mean, you know, I could probably schedule a podcast three times a week with someone from someplace, like if I wanted to, and I, I, I can't handle that. I, you know, I pick and choose the ones that I want to do. And, did, you know, producer, dude, did, wait a minute. Did you hear this? Like, I mean, he, he picked us. I, I, I was oh, yeah. no, I, feeling uh, oh, I felt no, that. that was heartfelt. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm not going to, I mean, we don't want to crush him because he's the right. young gun. We have had some kind of big time deals on this. We have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a couple. I, I've seen a couple on here. <laughs> I, th that's my thing lately. So, like, I've been, like I said, I've been staying up until like probably two or three in the morning pretty consistently, getting, you know, prep for this PWS series just because my days are busy with dealing with all the stuff that I can't do. And, you know, my days are dealing with phone calls and m mainly right now emails, that kind of stuff, touching base with sponsors, making sure, you know, my boat's coming next week, all that kind of stuff. So like, that's my days. And then obviously like, I still have to find time to prep for all this stuff that I'm, you know, all this fishing that I'm trying to do. So I've been doing it in the middle of the night and podcasts have been my thing, man. Like I've been digging list into, I mean, I've watched every single head to head interview that's been out there. I've been diving into the anglers that are in the head to head that you've interviewed. I've watched every single one of theirs so far. I watched Okada's. I watched Ronnie or not Ronnie, Johnny candle. I, I mean, there's just a ton of guys that, uh, you know, I, I, I listen to and I try to learn from everyone. And I think that, like you said, like watching these guys that, you know, have had success on the business side, and the fishing side, like, and trying to find that balance point in between is really important. And that's part of the reason why I'm down to, you know, 2018, 2019, I was doing 25 tournaments a year for 2018 and 2019. I mean, did 50 tournaments between those two years. And like this year, I'll probably maybe touch 15, like maybe. And that's like, that'll be, I bet you that's pushing it. I'll probably be closer to 12 tournaments this year. I just, I'm going to narrow my view, field of view a little bit on the tournament stuff, focus in on the, the ones that I'm doing. And then, yeah, really try to focus in on the business aspect of everything, you know, try to push as many product stuff as I can really, you know, try to do the best I can for my sponsors and, you know, 
you know, j- try to be the best well-rounded angler I can possibly be. Understand, understanding that at, at that age is that's, that's huge. I mean, at that point in the game, because it's just, it's pretty much mandatory. You talk to any of the old school guys and yeah. you know, that's how, that's how that works. But I mean, it takes big balls to even make the jump you did. I mean, tell me a little bit about, you know, again, people all the time. I mean, th- we're not talking about what you did or your level or winning or not any of that. Just, just saying, Hey, I'm going to quit my day job. I mean, have you done that essentially? Yeah, pretty. Yeah. I, so I worked as a Mason, like a concrete Mason for six years, almost. I, I started when I was basically 18 and I quit uh, January. Of, well, last year I did a little bit of my, I still technically own an LLC for doing like construction and stuff like that. I don't really use it as much anymore. Um, a little bit through the winter, I've helped a buddy or two out that have their companies. So I did a little bit of subcontracting through some people, but not, not like what I did last year. I still did probably, I would say 50% of my year was doing con- construction by myself. Um, but yeah, I, I actually owned a company with a couple guys for two, two years. Um, and then I, I just got out of it, honestly. I mean, I, I, I kind of knew this is what, this was taking off. I knew this was going to go someplace. And, and it was kind of like, like you said, with what Polinick said, like, if you have a plan B in this, like you are going to fall back on it. Cause I mean, for example, January, February, and March in this industry suck. <laughs> like They just do like, especially from Wisconsin, like we are froze up pretty much that entire time. I don't, I'm not really pursuing anything ice wise. So that time of the year, it's tough. I mean, it's tight. It's you got to budget yourself appropriately. You got to be smart about your finances because your tournament entry fees are starting to become due. You got, you know, boats coming in, you got electronics that you're buying, like all this stuff and, you know, learning how to manage it. I'm still in the midst of that. Like I still don't have it like figured out. Like some of these guys do Got so many guys that like, October, they've sold their old boat. They are ordering their new boat that, you know, all of it, it's just click, click, click. They've got it down to a, a science. It's probably in their calendar for 10 years in advance kind of thing. Like it's just one of those deals. Like, yeah, you, you really, if you want to do this full time, you got to just do it. You got to jump in head first, just go for it. Don't look back. Don't, don't think about, well, what could be or what, you know, like you, you really truly got to want it. You really got to go for it and you can't hold back. That's, that's, a, that's the best advice I could give to anyone thinking about trying to do this is like, just do it. Especially if you're young. I mean, I'm, I'm 26, turned 26 this year. And like, I kind of understand, like, I mean, I, I'm either going to do this now or I'm going to look back in 30 years and regret every second that I didn't try to do this. Like, and then there's no in between, like you, you're going to do it or you're going to look back on it and you're going to wish you would have. And time is the one thing that none of us are guaranteed and you can't get more of it no matter how much you try. So you better make your time worth it now and go and live your life, man. T- timing is everything. And I would argue again, I always look at the bass side of things because they're lightning years ahead of us. And they, 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 a lot of that's trickle down stuff. Right. So realistically when you look at like guys like a kevin van dam i mean just a classic or rick clun or somebody they're just always doing well but they're still not doing quite as well and there's an awful lot of these younger guys that are coming in and they're using you know electronics or or they're 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 just fishing a different way you know live sonar right now i mean that's huge i know that's been a part of your game right i mean yeah don't tell anybody maybe oh, no. maybe a little bit yeah maybe a little bit right but so that i mean that exponentially because there's a lot of really good fishermen out there that aren't going to pick up on that like you have or maybe go because eh, you know sometimes you know too much just like doing well on, on your home body of water traditionally a lot of guys don't do well especially the bigger they are because you almost have too many memories right and you know too much right. about something and you don't fish the conditions and and sometimes when you're newer and you don't have that you know you go to a lake and i don't know how many bass terms of it won by guys and it's a bunch that people go why did you do that and he said i didn't have any other option i didn't know i didn't know we weren't supposed to go there that the fish don't go there because kevin van damme right. fished 30 tournaments there and high water low water muddy water clean water spring fall summer but you just go in there and you're like i just went with an open mind that's all i did right 
Yeah, you trust your gut a lot of the time, I think, is part of it, too. Like, you just kind of, hey, I was at this type of body of water and this kind of conditions, and this is what they were doing. I'm going to go check it, even if it's what everyone says that you shouldn't be checking. I mean, I'll tell you what, like, I went on a pretty good tear this past August on Green Bay, um, and all of my fish came out of water where there was people telling me I wasn't going to catch them there. Like, they're just like, no, that's not where you win tournaments this time of year. That's not what happens. You know, you know, that's just not where they traditionally go. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, guess what? They're there and I caught them and I did good. Like, it, you know, you don't, you know, if you think that, I mean, <laughs> fish have tails, man. They gonna, they're they going to swim. They're going to go where they want to go. They're going to chase. Number one, they're going to chase bait. They're going to go wherever the food is. And that's, that's the biggest game you got to play is what are the fish feeding on? Like, and then you just follow them. That's kind of all it comes down to it. In my book, like, I mean, make it sound really simple, but it's not. <laughs> so like, you fish know, don't it, go far from the grocery store, you know, that's exactly. I mean, you know, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to go and run down a deer or are you going to go and pick up a McDonald's burger? Most days I'm probably going to go and pick up a McDonald's burger as a truck to trying to literally chase down and tackle a deer like it's just Producer the way because he's a very clean eater uh i'm not necessarily clean i'm just not a meat eater yeah he's not a meat i eater. like little debbies though so oh yeah. which is ironic because i work for meat eater yeah which right. is like very right. irony is very deep there <laughs> so I would, I would say you know i think for a young guy and tell me if you've experienced this because again i've been there it just it's been a, it's been a long time um I think that young guys, you have to have confidence, like you said, you know, and experience helps with confidence. But I think with old guys or just people that, you know, look at you know, like your success and they'll say, hey, that's cocky or arrogance to be successful. I mean, dude, I know all the big dogs. You know, I, a lot of these guys are close friends and and you can call it whatever you want. I personally don't care. But I think when you're a younger guy, you're judged differently. Oh, yeah. But on the same point, there's an awful lot of younger guys that need to be drop kicked um, because they just they don't seem to get it. You know what I mean? So there's like that fine line where they're not helping yourself. And I've wondered to just, you know, with your your big success that you've had in a relatively short amount of time, I'm sure you've experienced that with whether it's sponsors or other individuals or just people in the fishing industry or I mean, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I think like. I mean, confidence is everything, like, really, like, and, and there is a fine line between being confident and cocky. Like, I, I try my hardest not to come off as cocky. I know that sometimes I do, and I, I think, you know, sometimes I look at, you know, what I've been able to do or accomplish, like, and I kind of want to be cocky a little bit, you know, kind of flaunt it, be like, yeah, look at what I've done. But, like, at the same time, like, you got to be confident in the moment, I think is kind of the key. At least that's what I've really discovered or felt, you know, found and to, to find my success. Like if I go out on the morning and I truly believe that I can catch them that day, I'm probably going to have a pretty good day. If I go out in the morning, I'm, I got doubts in my mind about what's going to happen. It, it's going to be tougher. Like, it, and I'm not saying that you can't win on those days where you think it's going to be tough. I mean, the first win I ever chalked up with one of my good buddies, we, I mean, we thought we were going to just maybe catch a fish or two. Like, man, it just happened to, you know, we landed on the right fish and caught a couple of good ones. And, I, you know, a, a positive attitude and positive thinking is huge. I talk about it all the time with the guys that I fish with. Like if you, if you get yourself down over, you know, something that happens during the day or you show up to a spot and there's 10 other people there or whatever it is, like, you're already setting yourself up for failure. I mean, once you allow, allow negativity into your life, like it just, it spreads and it grows and it, it just eats away at you. So you, you got to keep an open mind. You got to keep a positive thoughts all day long. And, you know, producer, dude, would, producer, dude, we need to get this guy on. Cause I feel like, he, well, he's the, he's the exact opposite of you. At, at the times there's no <laughs> doubt. There's no that, doubt. That's as he's explaining this, that, that was making me laugh. Cause I'm thinking of all the times where Ross is in the boat, pouting, yelling at me, yelling at whoever's on the boat with him. And that next what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that like we may be able to hire him as a counsel. This could be a good side gig for you because for you, you I, I think you need it a little bit too. But <laughs> let's let's just be honest. Like I remember Tony. Ro it's Tony Robbins stuff here. If you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're also right. <laughs> right. Wow. 
that, that, that's, that's deep. deep. <laughs> that's deep. And it, and it's true though. Like it is like, if you, if you go out in the morning from takeoff and you think you're going to have a tough day, it's going to be a tough day. It, it just is like, you're, you're not in the right mindset. Pa- Brandon Polinick is like, he talks about mindset probably more than almost anyone that I really Ger- kind of pick. Gerald Swindle. He sells the PMA things. I mean, right, right. Gerald Swindle, Carl Jockamson, all those guys. Like, I mean, if you watch the guy, if you watch the greats and any of this, you gotta be having fun. You gotta be enjoying yourself, whether it is sucking to terrible, like, and you are eating it or, you know, I don't know. I, but- I just try to look at, I mean, I've, I visited third world countries and I try to look at it as I got it better all the time than people like that. Like, that's just the way I look at it. I've, I've been to places where people really have it bad. So like any day I spend on the water is a great day. You need to be, you need to be listening to this. Producer dude. I feel like today, listen, I mean, some of the guide clients, you know, they look at me like, are we in Lake Winnebago or Lake Erie? What's up? Like our morning was brutal, you know, and I had a bunch of my guys out. I heard heard the last two days out there has been tough, huh? To see my pictures though i stuck it out and i got it done i mean yeah you got the big girls i got i got the girl and today we end up like the, but again the whole morning like if i was fishing a tournament today producer dude you're probably right i would have been a wreck because it was brutal but the second half of the day i mean basically like i mean we're, the bewitching hour i just put on a clinic and we got some biggins but yeah to go through that and you know and again that's where I mean, I'd like to hear your take on this because we talk about that experience thing and there's no right answer. Obviously the right answer on Monday is the wrong answer on Tuesday or in the morning or in the afternoon, but you know, the, the confidence, I stuck it out and I grounded out in the area. And part of it was cause I just, you know, the water clarity and where other, I know where there's not going on, you know, sometimes your options right. are smaller in the springtime and when you're dealing with spawning fish or, you know, fish that are staging, but the, the you can look at it from an outside like if you're doing the tv deal and you're like well yeah i knew that we had to grind it out my experience well realistically you're just like i didn't know what else to do but the yeah. con- the keeping the confidence because again for you when you you know i think you started to guide i i know a little bit about guiding like i've almost five thousand days of doing it and it's like right. you are a counselor to these people because they just oh, like, yeah you have to it, it, it's insane like especially when a dude loses a big fish like i mean country steve producer dude i mean god we've seen it, we've seen it many times we've seen it and ross does not count so well i don't know i, I, <laughs> so, <laughs> I they they would fire me from the suicide hotline like boom <laughs> right there over with no i'm like what are you, i told you you're gonna lose it you're real like a, you're, what are you doing uh <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm it happens. No, like I, I've, I've, you know, I've only done a few guide trips and I've helped out with some, with some friends and stuff, but yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. I mean, we, I was just down in Illinois helping one of my good buddies, Mike Hansen out on the Illinois river, do some guide trips this past weekend. We fished Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And like, we had one bite window really where there was fish biting. We had, you know, 10 o'clock until about noon or so we had fish biting. And other than that, it was, it was tough the entire time. So you're sitting there and you're trying to explain that to your clients. Hey, like, you know, just stay with us, stay, stick with it. It's going to, you know, we're going to find some fish. We're going to get some bites. It's going to happen sooner or later here. And like, it's, that's tough, man. Like to try to, you know, to try to keep yourself in it too. It's hard tournament day. It gets really hard. I mean, my, AIM partners past year, Tristan and I, we were fortunate enough to win the AIM championship on, on Winnebago. And I, I'm not going to lie. I was starting to get a little bit nervous because we were sitting in the spot that we knew that we could have a shot at winning it at. And it was 10 30, 11 o'clock already. And we only had one 15 inch fish on our card. And I was starting to get a little antsy and Tristan was kind of like, well, we do, we got nothing else. We might as well just kind of sit here for a little bit longer, at least. I mean, we know what's going on out in, in the main lake. You can pull up on any rock pump you wanted to, and you could catch, you know, 112 to 15 inches, but you weren't catching anything that was better. So we just sat, sat there and grounded out. And, you know, it's one of those situations where, you know, now the experience tells me like, okay, well, we sat there and, you know, the wind was wrong the entire time there. And then it, the wind stopped for a little bit. And right when that wind stopped, we were in the river and the current picked up just a little bit. And it was like a light switch. And we went from having one fish on our car to Tristan got back-to-back 
15 and a 17. So then we were like in business. We're like, all right, well, we're catching fish now. And I caught a 20 and three quarter, which for that tournament at the time, like those were, we were not catching those fish like at all in practice or anything. So I was like, all right, we got something going. We got to capitalize. And I told Tristan, I was like, Hey, it's your turn. Like, I'm going to put you past the, like this spot that we kind of know, like there's certain areas there that like, there's definitely like, you can kind of put a guy on the area where it's like, you're going to have a better shot at getting one. And like, it's your turn. I'm putting you right on it and come through it. And he sets the hook and it's just a toad 27 and three quarter inch wall out of Winnebago, which is just a monster and put that one in the boat. And <laughs> well, I flipped it on the net first. Tristan started yelling at me. I scooped it, got it put it in the bottom of the boat. We measured it, realized how big it was, took some, a ton of pictures because neither of us had like ever seen a 27 and three quarter out of Bago. He tosses it back. And, uh, you know, I, I sit down, I write down on the card, like, you know, the length and then I flip over real quick to just look at what the, the weight conversion was. And it was 8.68 pounds or something like that. And we had weighed 8.4 pounds as our total bag from day one. So <laughs> I just started laughing. I was like, dude, we won it. Like we literally sat here all day in one spot and did the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. I mean, by the end of the day, the graph just looks stupid. We we're, you know, we we're drifting through a section that was 65 feet long. We want to hear a story, a fishing story. Not long. This is a quick hitter. Okay. okay. But one thing that we're going to be like, oh my God, like one of my, one of the bosses at one of my sponsors hit us when he got hit by lightning holding a rod on the lake. And I'm like, and I'm, I've known the guy for 10 years and I'm like, what? We want that. Give me that one hitter of like, what in the, it just happened. Well, now you just set him up because he's got to live up to being struck by lightning. I mean, when I heard that, did you not like, I'm yeah. like, oh, I looked up. Yeah. I was like, what? Oh man. Yeah. That's a hard, I don't know if I can one up that one. Um, you don't have to one up it. You, you bring your thing. Or make something just a up that's really good. Crazy experience. Like just the craziest thing. The, what, that you've I, experienced I mean, fishing. Cause I have some that we definitely even producer dude. He normally goes, I got to cut that cause you're going to ruin your career. But I mean, <laughs> which is, that's not saying. Yeah. Oh man. Are you are you choking, Isaac? Is that what I'm hearing? I feel a like you're, bit. Um, it's two o'clock and my, you've got four in the box. I, mean, I, I tell people that I fish a lot, and and they think that you know when I say that you know I'm talking about ten hour days. So you guys obviously know, you know the fall brawl. You guys know what that's all about. Um, Mike Hansen and I hopped in his boat two two years ago, two falls twenty nine fall twenty nineteen. And we fished from Friday night at about four o'clock in the evening. And we didn't get off the water until Sunday morning at three 30 in the morning. We had the generator on the boat. We had the stove, we had our sleeping bags. We, we literally two and a half days on the water out there. That, that's, I would say that's probably one of the wildest ones. I mean, producer dude is shaking his head yeah. to pooping. Uh, I I thought oh, of that yeah, before. That, that was awful. Yeah, that and that what made me think of that was when you said there are stories I can't tell, but yet you told me the pooping story. So I was thinking, what else could there even be? I have many. I <laughs> I have pooping stories that I can categorize as in male, female, young, old, even by like. <laughs> by Do you have season. a list of pooping stories. We we have a loose. We have a list of pooping stories now. Yeah, yeah. That was probably. I mean, that was probably one of the most like spur of the moment i call we we talked to each other on like a thursday and it was like the next day we were headed out like it was literally like the day after thanksgiving we were like left in the morning got to erie hit the water and didn't get off until the brawl was basically over like i mean it was that was pretty crazy um i actually two weeks ago we just went down one of the i just broke through over a quarter mile, probably closing in on a half mile of ice to get out on out onto Green Bay. Literally, was I was driving. I I've got a video I could send you guys. I was driving. We were driving my my boat up onto like six to eight inches of ice and letting it fall through it, and then driving up on the next six to eight inches and letting it fall through. Like, and we did that like for an hour to get through that. Like, it was pretty wild. It was, I. I don't know. There's some fresh scratches in that my old boat. That's for sure. Scale oh. one to ten, producer dude. I don't. 
Okay. I'm going to give him one more chance because, I mean, I'm, I'm not calling you out here, but I feel like, I mean, he's a young guy. Like, I mean, it could be a vagina story even. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, dude. Oh, we... oh you want a you you good one? Oh, man. You, you... Here, Max, Max likes telling this story more than anyone. Um, yeah, I hitchhiked a launch one morning. Uh, <laughs> Like yeah, I think literally. this is already better. I'm already liking it. Got I got him now. Yeah. Woo, doggy, come I, on. I did, I did hitchhike to a boat launch one morning after a, a, a fun night out party in, in a town I'd never been to down in Nebraska. But uh, yeah, that that was interesting. I got I got picked up by another group of anglers and I had to explain my whole situation to them in the morning and they just started dying laughing and then Max was about ready to kill me by the time I got back because I was already late. So, yeah, that, that was a fun one. That that was. I won't go into too many details because if Mama watches this one, she'll kick my ass. That's for sure. Okay, you redeemed yourself a little bit, but next time you're gonna have to bring it. You know, you're gonna- oh, I, I'll, I got a couple that yeah. I, there's one or two stories that I can like more of just fun fishing stories, but. Yeah, we'll save those for another Just make day. one up for next time. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I was struck by lightning while catching a 20 pound walleye. And yeah. <laughs> just, just in case we get ripped off the airways or thrown off the internet again, um, give us one thing. I, I like these. People like these. Producer dude loves them. He, you got to realize, I, producer duties. I like them when they work. He, <laughs> right, because dude, we we've literally I've asked people some stuff that I think it's easy going. Like, I mean, I do a lot of these things, and I'm like, you know, I I don't have anything prepared, but I come up with something. I feel like, hey, and then some of these dudes, producer dude, they sit there and they go like, ah. Uh. So I'm gonna give you an easier one because I know you're 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 a little it's, yeah, he's young, he's gun shy, he's not as confident. Get some he, he thinks he may lose a sponsor or something. I might have to go smooth it over for him, or you know, whatever. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> That probably is not going to help you at all. But, I mean, maybe there's one company that I could help you with. But So, what's the average fisherman? Like, is there a simple thing that you see that the average fisherman does wrong that you think is easily correctable? Um, yeah, they're not paying attention enough to what they're doing. They, you watch so many guys just looking around, doing something not Like, they're not... I mean, if you watch me in the boat, I'm hawking my rod, my reel, whatever, whether I'm pulling boards, or I'm jigging, like I am 100% living in that moment. I think, I mean, if you, if you even just watch other people for a little bit, they're, they're watching you, they're watching the other guy to the other side of them. They're just paying attention to what everyone else is doing. And if you're paying attention to what someone else is doing, you're not going to notice what you're doing wrong. And you're really not going to, you know, you're going to miss what you did right to get that bite that you needed. Like, you know, the, there's so many times where just a little change in cadence or just a slight change in speed or something like that is the difference between getting a bite or not. And you missed that. You you missed it, period. I, I feel like living in the moment, you're done. Producer dude, he is he has absolutely redeemed himself. And and we're gonna close with a short story with the producer dude as part of. We had uh Chris, big Chris you know, that, that works for me. We run on guide trips. Do you remember we were filming a jigging show and it was mm-hmm. not going well. We were trying to make a jigging show happen when a jigging bite wasn't even on the radar. Was it June? It, yeah, it was like, it was like, yeah, we're trying to jig the reefs in June on Lake Erie, which it was over like, you know, but it was like, it's a long story, dude. It's part of the business end of things, right? We're like, we don't have, we, we need to do a jigging show. So we're like catching sheephead white bass. But at any rate, Chris had just had, I think his first baby at that point. And so, you know, mama's calling, you know how that stuff goes. And oh, he yeah. kept getting bites every time he would check his phone. Yeah. And producer dude, who is like, I mean, is is official like a least knowledgeable fisherman ever? Because you're not really a fisherman. Right. Okay. Fair. And uh, one he's of the like, most knowledgeable non fishermen. He, he's he's gaining stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, he was literally like, hey, um, he told like, Chris, I mean, who's a rock star? I mean, we're talking dude, this team of the year out here. I mean, the dude's a rock star. And he was like, hey, uh, Chris, I'm no fisherman, but every time you check your phone, you catch literally catch a fish every single time. And like, we went back on that show and like showed, and he was dropping his rod. It was like every time he was just doing the same thing. And I start watching him and then we started catching and there's the rest of his history. Yeah. So there it goes. Sometimes, you know, cadence. Cadence is everything. 
period. When you're jigging cadence is the most important thing you're doing. How they want to move. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, to come on here because he's had other opportunities. He's turned some down, producer. Did yeah, he that should turn make you down. feel real good. It, it kind of does, you know. Um, I feel like now we may get him again if he gets really big, you know. I'm, I'm, anytime you want to have me on, I'm more than willing to come and talk. <laughs> well, we appreciate your time. Thank you for tuning in to the Big Water Podcast. Check us out at bigwaterfishing.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. What else am I forgetting? I mean, we've got uh, the, the audio podcasts. Audio podcast. Uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I'm missing one. Spotify. If you can't find it, you don't have Google or you ain't trying hard enough. Big Water Fishing. Big Water's one word. Thanks, Isaac. Good luck to you in the upcoming season. And other than that, we are out of here. It's time to go fishing now.